So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Poco F3 5G. This is the unlocked global version. I wanna thank the guys at Poco for sending this over to review on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description of the video with current pricing and more information. It also has a 6.67 inch AMOLED display, 120 Hertz. It also has Dolby Atmos, Snapdragon 870 5G processor, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, 48 megapixel triple camera. It's also got fast charging. It comes in three different colors. You've got Arctic white, blue. The one here is night black. 4,520 milliamp hour battery. Current pricing on this one is right around 400 bucks. So lots of good stuff with this one as far as features and specs. They pack in as many features as possible while still keeping the price relatively affordable. Nice little welcome to the Poco family card here. SIM card ejection tool. You've even got a clear case included with this one. Poco stickers, quick start guide, safety information, warranty card, USB-C to headphone jack adapter, USB-C to USB-A charging cable, really big 33 watt fast charger, plus they threw in an adapter for the United States. Definitely feels like you get quite a bit of stuff here in the box. Okay, this is definitely one of the shiniest phones that I've seen in a while. This actually looks really good in person. Really nice triple camera set up there on the back. I gotta say hardware wise, this is really nice. Sort of reminds me of what OnePlus is doing. You've got a matte finish there on the sides. You can see the power and volume buttons on the right hand side. Super shiny on the top and bottom. On the bottom is your SIM card tray, USB-C charging, and your speaker. As you can see, this comes with MIUI 12.5 software, hole punch style camera up there towards the top in the center. Looks like it's already got a screen protector on it as well. This one does have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. As you can see, pretty slim bezels there all the way around. For the screen lock, you've got pattern, pin, and password. Besides your fingerprint scanner here on the side. Watch how fast this fingerprint scanner works. Definitely one of the best that I've used in a while. Okay, nice and bright wallpaper there. Currently it's only using about 23 gigabytes of the 128 gigabyte storage. Now this software is gonna be a little bit different than stock Android. You swipe to switch between control center and notification shade, swipe up to get all your apps, and then swipe over to see different categories. Nice thing is it lets you uninstall some of the apps that are pre-installed. Swiping left to the home screen, you're gonna get the Google News Feed. The software on here feels nice and snappy, not really much lag at all. So you swipe anywhere on the screen to get the notification shade. Then you reach a little bit further up to get the control center. I sort of like how they do their control center here. In there, you've got mobile data, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, screen brightness here. You get your auto screen brightness. You can also add some extra shortcuts here in the control center, such as focus mode, bedtime mode, AliExpress shop, and me remote. The display on here actually looks really nice. You're gonna get up to 2160p resolution on YouTube. Surprisingly, you're gonna get full HD on Netflix. You do get some gestures on here. You can launch the Google Assistant, press and hold the power button for 0.5 seconds. Take a screenshot by swiping three fingers down. You can launch the camera by double pressing the volume down when the screen's locked. You can also turn on the torch by double pressing the power button. And then you have several combinations here for button shortcuts. You've also got the options to use buttons or full screen gestures. They've also got a couple different versions you can pick from for the control center. There's also some presets here for Dolby Atmos, video, music, voice, or dynamic. There's also quite a few options to choose from when it comes to wallpaper. A lot of your typical widgets that you can add as well. There's also custom themes that you can use for this phone. Even though this is a little different than stock Android, I feel like most people are going to enjoy the software by Poco. Let's do a quick speaker test just so you get an idea of what to expect. Okay, speakers on here actually sound really good. You've got one on the bottom, nice and loud, even at max volume. In the camera app, you've got Pro, Video, 
photo, portrait, and then a more you've got a lot of different stuff to choose from. You got night mode, 48 megapixel, short video, panorama, documents, vlog, slow motion, time lapse, dual video, movie effects, long exposure, and clone. When it comes to video, you can go up to 4K 30 frames per second, and that's on the rear facing camera, up to 1080p 60 frames per second on the front facing camera. Okay, so super fast shutter speed on this one. Resolution appears to be really good on here as well. Here's a few samples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what to expect. I gotta say, even though this is considered a mid-range phone, just from the samples that I took, everything looks super crisp, nice detail, and pretty much all lighting situations. Portrait mode looks really good on here as well. It blurs some things that it probably shouldn't, just like a lot of others out there. This phone definitely struggles a little bit with focus every now and then when taking photos. Overall though, I'm pretty impressed. It's a lot better than what I expected. And then you want to talk about performance. This thing is right up there with flagship phones by Google, Samsung, right at 1000 for single core scores, over 3300 for multi-core scores. I mean, if you're looking for a mid-range phone with flagship performance, this is definitely one you should check out. Gaming on here was nice and smooth as well, as expected. Nice HD graphics. The graphics seem to load pretty quick. Everything looks and plays really good, especially in PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9. I can't imagine there's gonna be that many games that this phone can't handle. Overall, I really like the software on here. I'm actually having trouble trying to find stuff on this phone that I don't like. So far, I'm just really impressed with the performance, software, just about everything that they've packed into this phone at this price point. It's pretty impressive. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may wanna say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.